Assalamualaikum Waalaikumsalam Alhamdulillah Assalamualaikum to y'all out there This is us at the DMV Islam page Alhamdulillah We got a special recording from you all MashaAllah by Allah's mercy We have our brother Ali Muhammad Who has come to see us all the way from Merlin And we're all the way in Alexandria, Virginia So Akhi, why don't you introduce yourself And give a brief introduction to the people Brothers and sisters Assalamu alaikum um, Peace be unto you um, I am Ali Muhammad you know, uh, I'm just out here just to, you know, speak on a couple of things that's dealing with this Umar today. Yeah. All right, alhamdulillah. So how you enjoyed yourself? Uh, how was the trip? Uh, Tohi, Tohi. Um, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a blessing in Islam, man. It's, it's, so, it's so much that we can learn, so much things we can do. And this Umar, and, and, and as an Umar, we need to stay together, get together, and, and learn. Nice you know, and that's all, that's all it is. You know, I don't think I'm more knowledgeable than the next, you know. I'm right. just letting y'all know what I know. Mashallah. You know? And that's what that's all it is. That's what it is. So mashallah, Allah is the most merciful. He's been guiding a lot of people to Islam. You've had a lot of people taking shahada nowadays, becoming Muslim. Alhamdulillah. Mashallah. There's some issues in the Ummah, uh, in the in our nation, Muslim nation, and basically we want to touch on those few issues, basically, and inshallah see if we can bring them to light so that inshallah we can start to make changes on them. Inshallah, uh, why don't you begin with the first issue that you want to basically warn the Ummah about or something you want to share some light on, inshallah. Um, shirk. Alhamdulillah. Um, shirk is, is, is very, very, very serious in Islam. Um, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, uh, he said to his companions, the most thing that I fear for you most is worshiping Allah with something else or somebody else. It doesn't matter. Just worshiping Allah alone is the main focus that we need to have in this Ummah. And shirk is worshiping Allah with something else. Like, uh, let's see, for an example, it could be horoscope. Horoscope is around. You know what I'm saying? That's a sign of shirk. Um, fortune telling, shirk. Um, Can I ask you a question? What about fortune cookies? Fortune cookies. That's that's a, that's a sign of shirk. That's shirk also because there's no one that can tell you your future. There's no one that can tell you what's gonna happen tomorrow. There's no one that can tell you um, what you're gonna eat tomorrow, what you're gonna have tomorrow, are you gonna be healthy tomorrow. Nothing like that, but Allah. And um, anything, any other, anything otherwise is shirk. And that is, and that, and, and that rate, I cannot stress how serious shirk is oh. in the Quran. All right, so Afi, you're talking about shirk, which is the worst crime, the worst sin in Islam. There's nothing worse than shirk. But let me ask you this: maybe some people still don't understand how serious it is. So briefly, we want, we don't, we want to keep going with the video. But briefly, how serious is shirk? Like, if someone dies upon shirk, is there any hope for them? Subhanallah. No. <laughs> Slap. No. There's you know no hope for a person dies upon shirk. No. If you die upon shirk, that is it. You're in the hellfire. That's the number one sin there. Allah is the most merciful. The most merciful. The most merciful. But in the Quran, it says that shirk is one thing you will not forgive if you die upon it. You know? So the best thing you do is learn shirk. So you won't make it. It's two types of shirk. It's the, the minor shirk and the major shirk. You know? And the minor shirk... It's, it's little things that that's gonna lead you to the hellfire, but you know it, it was a uh, it was a saying that you you'll be there for a minimum time, right. you know. But we don't want to be there. You don't want to be there at all. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's that's the whole point. You don't want to be there at all. Somehow, a lot. But um, it's minor and major. Major shirt, you get where I'm coming from. And, and like I say, my, my uh, Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him told his companions that. It's one thing that I fear for you most, and that's associating partners with Allah. Right. And other religions, I'm not saying no names, do it, you know. So, as a as a Umar, as a Muslim Umar community, we need to learn shirk because this is very serious. And and a lot of masjids in the DMV, I don't know about other places, but in the DMV, does don't really touch on shirk. And and if you think about it. One of the first, if you think of the five pillars, if you know in Islam, Shahada, 
You have Salat, you have Sakat, you have Ramadan fasting, and then you have Hajj, the five pillars. Now, what was the first uh, out of the five pillars that I have said? I said Shahad. What is part of Shahad? You know, the first thing we say, what does we say when we, when we take out Shahada? Well, well, there's kind of a misconception amongst Muslims. Some Muslims take Shahada to mean that there is no God but Allah, right. which is true. Mm -hmm. But truly the Shahada means that there is nothing worthy of worship except Allah. MashaAllah. MashaAllah. Masha Masha he touched it more than I can, Masha even, Masha I can even speak it. And what he said right there is just lets you know that there is no one to be worshipped but Allah. And shirk it's associating partners with a lot. So if you do and you do that, you're breaking one of the five pillars. Come on, mashallah. Brothers and sisters, this is something that we really, really need to get a handle on. Mashallah. Okay. Alhamdulillah. Um, I just like to say something real quick. Uh, one of the hadiths of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam is that religion is nasiha. It's it's advice. Well, none of us, we cannot be too proud to take advice. That's that's not Islam. That Allah knows best that could be a sign of pride. If we're too exalted to, to take advice, and Allah is the most exalted. So, as Muslims, I, we advise each other. You advise us, we advise you. No one is better than the next person. We're not scholars or nothing. So, the brothers here, alhamdulillah, he came out here to give you all some advice. So, for the sake of Allah, let us hear the advice. So, Akhi, we have a lot of young Muslims, a lot of young Muslims, a lot of new Muslims who are new to Islam. What is your advice to the young Ummah? Um, I'm going to just start with Facebook. You have a lot of brothers um, on Facebook with kufis on, rolling up weed, holding up bottles. SubhanAllah. This is not part of the day. This is not part of Islam. Um, and, and, and my advice, my advice, SubhanAllah, Allah knows best. Um, but this is not part of the Sunnah. This isn't, this is, you, you, you've seen this nowhere in a Hadith. You haven't seen this in the Quran, nowhere. You you will not find no ayat on it at all for us to do this. Alcohol period is haram. We is haram. You, if, I'm not encouraging no one to do this. I repeat, I'm not encouraging no one to do this. But if you do this, if this is your choice, if this is what you want to do, then at least you know take take the kufi off, take the throws off. You know, don't don't make this look like a part of our community. Because this is something that we do not want to be associated with at all. You, you know, for the new brothers that's coming in, they look they looking from out, looking in, they think it's cool. We have a lot of new brothers, you know, and some brothers that want to take their shahada. And they looking from the outside looking in. And they and they think it's cool. They they see they see brothers, you know, smoking, holding drinks and this is not cool. And they think it's, it's a part of the religion. They think it's a part of the religion. It's nowhere near a part of the religion. It may be cool for y'all and it's doing it. But in a, in a hereafter, you're going to be a loser. You're going to be a loser. SubhanAllah. And um, I'm just giving advice, man. You know, uh, a lot of brothers gave me the same talk. And I, I'm just sharing the knowledge. That's, that's, um, as far as the Utis go, the sisters. Um, I see a lot of stuff. Again... On Facebook, um, I see a lot of statuses with sisters. Um, they're sad. They 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 they're constantly downplaying brothers and, and, and saying brothers doing this and doing that. Two reasons: one, because the brothers is not following the sunnah. They're not doing what they need to be doing. They're not respecting women. They're not. They're not. They're not. They're not constantly fat, fasting. As, as not like Ramadan fasting, abstaining from drinks and, and, and food, but fasting with their hearts, opening up to Allah, you know, giving their hearts to Allah, you know, fasting in that way. It's three types of fasting, and one of them is with your heart. And um, they're they're not fasting, so when it comes to that, they're they're doing a lot of things to sisters that's haram. As far as for the Utis go, the sisters, um, if you actually make a brother do what he's supposed to do as far as the sunnah, you know, if he wants to talk to you, if he wants to, to get to know you, if he wanted to, you know what you have to do, marriage, you know, and what way can you get married without a brother talking to your wali, let me know, if you know, let me know, but I don't know, so sisters, please start making these brothers talk to your wali first, before they say 
anything to you, you know, except for in, unless it's, it's, a, it's a, poli a political greeting, salam alaikum, you know. But other than that, you know, want to get to know your name, you know, uh, uh, can I call you, can we hang out, you know. I see. You so know. if they want to get to know the sisters, like, tr if they decide, I like this sister, I want to marry her, Wally time. Wally time. Wally time. Wally time. Wally time. And, um, and with, with, with brothers and sisters, what you need to understand about Facebook, this is what you need to understand. Nothing escapes the laws of Allah. Nothing. Nothing escapes Allah's law. When something new comes out, whether it's the internet, whether it's a radio, whatever, you, we need to use it within the guidelines of Islam. So when it comes to Facebook, Allah knows best. I haven't read any proof where it says you can't meet someone through the, through the internet, Facebook, and marry them. But even if you do meet someone on Facebook that you like, like the brother just said, it's the same thing. You still, he still has to talk to your wali. Just because you're on the internet doesn't mean the rules change. If he likes you and you like him, you pleased with his character, he needs to talk to your wali. Period. It doesn't change just because it's on the internet. What is the ruling on Facebook? The ruling on Facebook is this. If you use Facebook within the guideline within the guidelines of Islam, it's halal. It's allowed. If you use Facebook outside the guidelines of Islam, it's haram. So it depends on how you use it. If you meet a brother through Facebook, he wants to marry you, okay and fine. Allah alam. He needs to talk to your wali just like the brother said. It doesn't change just because it's on the internet. And I just wanna we just wanna stress that and make it clear. SubhanAllah. And um Basically, what, what the brother said, if it's in the guidelines of Allah, you're good. You're good. You know, and it, everything revolves around the guidelines of Allah. It may not have been in the time of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, salallahu alayhi wa sallam. But um, it, it's here now, and the guidelines still reply, I mean, still revolves around everything that's in this dunya. So that's what we got, you know, a message to the young woman. And we not judging nobody. Not at all. Not we at was all. once mm. the worst of men. I know. I'm going to speak for myself. <laughs> I was once a straight up loser. Uh, uh, I'm talking about you wouldn't have wanted nothing to do with me. And only by Allah's mercy, I'm not like I was. Ah, let me tell you. You know what I'm saying? This is not encouraging no one at all. Right. But me and people that knew me before I became Muslim know that I was no saint. You know, I was no saint, you know what I'm right. saying? And even when I took my shahada, I still had a lot to learn, you know. But I'm, 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 I'm basically taking the knowledge that I have learned over time from brothers like you, brothers That's like right. um, uh, 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 Zachary, you know, from PGMA. Yeah. <laughs> I learned it from, uh, like, brother Tyler from uh, Capitol Heights, Mass G. Um, just learning, you know what I'm saying? And, and staying focused and fasting with my heart, you feel me? And then... And Allah made it easy, you know. So it, 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 a lot of brothers may say it's easy, which it is. Allah made this religion, you know, this 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 Uma, this this Islam, perfect. He made it easy. Long long as you seek it, he will make he will hope. I mean, he will make it easy for you to find. But the problem is that a lot of brothers doesn't don't really um. They they'll tell you it's easy, it's easy, it's easy. That's a, that's like if you know a math problem, right? It's easy to you because you know it. Right. You see what I'm saying? It's easy to you because you right. know it. Hands down, you can close your eyes and tell me what the math problem is. Right. You know what I'm saying? But if I don't know it, it's not easy for me because I don't know it. Right. So what I'm telling y'all brothers is you may not know it, and I'm saying it, e it is easy once you take that step to get to the easy part. Mashallah. After that, it is easy, subhanAllah. Mashallah. And that's what it is. You know, if you put, we taught in Islam, mashallah, if you take one step to Allah, he takes 10 steps to you. As long if you put even just a, a little bit, if you, if you are just sincere and you put forth just 20% of effort, Allah is the most merciful. He will multiply that. But you got to put in something. We can't do nothing and expect something. We're not just going to go on the young Ummah all day. There's issues amongst older Muslims. In fact, if the older Muslims had done a better job, Allah knows best, we would have a better Ummah. If the older Muslims... Muslim brothers in their 40s, 50s, 60s, the beard, if you had did your job, we wouldn't have a lot of problems that we have today. So the older Muslims, I don't, it doesn't matter if you're 60 or 80 or 150 years old, you're not exempt from this. So alhamdulillah, why don't you give some advice to the older Muslim brothers and sisters because they need some talking to, peace and as well.
Um, for the older Uma, for the older community, for the older brothers, point blank period. Um, I see it like this. This is a race. We're all racing towards towards uh, the finish line. The finish line is the last day, the day of judgment. Okay. Now we're racing to the day of judgment, right? We never know when the end is going to come. We're just running until we see the finish line. Now, as a Uma, you know, yes, on the day of judgment, we are we're going to stand alone. Our law is going to jump judge us alone. By ourselves with nobody. I'm not gonna have my man from up the street beside me, you know, and he's not gonna he's not gonna judge us together. I'm staying alone. Yes, this is true. But it's also a hadith, it's also a ayat that we must, we must want for our brother as we want for ourselves. So if you want knowledge, this is for the older Ummah, the older brothers. If you want knowledge, if you seek knowledge, if you if you went to get knowledge and you study knowledge and you, you study, study, study to the point where you know Quran off the top of your mind, why wouldn't you want that for the next little brother? Why wouldn't you want that? Um, so, it, like I said, it's a race. You know, so if I'm running to the last day and I see a brother behind or a brother beside me and I see he's getting tired, tired in the sense of he's not praying. He's not, he's not reading the Quran, or he just simply do, doesn't know something that he should know about the Sunnah. You know, I will help him so we can make it to that finish line together so we can be judged alone. You feel me? Why wouldn't you want to, to, to teach the next man what you have learned? You know, I have a lot of older brothers that just, subhanAllah, they, 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 they come to the masjid and they, and they, they, they make salah. You know, and, and, and you have little brothers, hey, hey, Aki, um, what about uh, such, such, such? And then they'd be like, oh, 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 oh subhanAllah, subhanAllah, uh, I, I gotta go, Aki, I gotta go, Aki, and, and it's nowhere important. Or, or you call you call a brother on his phone, you know, he tell you, call you call him anytime to uh, ask him any type of questions, and, and when you do it, and when you do it, they don't ask him. You know, certain stuff like that, man. We gotta, we gotta stick together as a ummah. All right. So, alhamdulillah, well, alhamdulillah, we are. Uh, it's good, good having you all with us, Akhi, and sharing your advice because again, religion is advice. I, I, I'm gonna mess up. The only one who is perfect is Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. I'm gonna make mistakes. I'm going to. It's not even a matter of maybe you won't. I'm gonna make mistakes, and I'm gonna need your advice. I'm gonna need you to advise me. It ain't about being in pride or in arrogance or none of that. It's about correcting your brother for the sake of Allah. And when you do correct someone in Islam, let's just go over this briefly, you correct them for the sake of Allah. But yeah, you don't correct your brother to make him look stupid. You don't correct your brother because you want to debate him. You correct your brother for the sake of Allah. Because for the sake of Allah, you want your brother on the straight path with you. Not because you want to make him look stupid. And when you want to correct someone, you do it in the way of the sunnah. You do not be harsh and you do not be arrogant. You 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 are humble and you correct him totally for Allah's sake. So alhamdulillah may Allah accept from us. Uh, and um also I want to touch before before we uh, let go is um is how you say it. Please, please watch how you say it to a brother. You know, because it's how you say things can turn a person off. You know, it, it can easily close their hearing and they won't even try to listen to you, you know. So, right. it's how you say it to a person. If, if you come with them, I mean, if you come to them with, with a, a nice tone, you know, and, and hey, you you know, that's, that's, that's not part of the sunnah. Right. You know, I, I didn't read that in no hadith or I didn't read that in the Quran, but I did read this. Right. You know, it's, 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 it's the way you say it, mashallah. So uh, with that said, man, I appreciate you. Salam alaikum. Take this in, you know, and, and, and apply it to your everyday life, you know, because we're we're umma, and, and, and for the for the younger umma, we're the we're the next generation. Salam alaikum, and uh, peace be upon to you, brothers and sisters. Inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is another DMV Islam page production. Continue to stay tuned to the page. We love you all for the sake of Allah. May Allah accept from us. Amen. Make dua for us. We love y'all. Peace out. Assalamu alaikum.